Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting lesson from SAGET Tech. My name is Asaf and I hope you enjoy this one. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below this video for us to be able to keep producing more and more of these wonderful, wonderful and exciting videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Technology Grade 9. Uh, we're still on mechanical systems and control, and like I promised, uh, this is the second lesson on gear ratios, and today we are doing calculations. In our previous video, we talked about the formulas that you're going to be using in order to calculate different components in uh, gears. And um, here was just comparison ratios, and this is or these are the formula they're going to be using. Gear ratio can be calculated as teeth of or number of teeth of the output gear over the number of teeth of input gear. And it can also be calculated as force of the output gear over force of the input gear. But when coming to uh, speed as an inverse of the number of teeth and uh, force, as gear ratio will then be calculated as speed of input gear over speed of output gear. Now, let's say for argument's sake you are given information here that in a gear system the number of teeth of input gear is 15 and the number of teeth of uh, output gear is 75. So it's 15 is to 75. And remember, the small one is driving the bigger one. You are requested to calculate the gear ratio, the speed of the input gear if the output gear runs at 10 revs per minute, as well as the force required for the input gear if the output gear produces a force of 50 newtons. Now, as I said last time, for you to be able to calculate the gear ratio, you must be having one of the components having its uh, input and output, either the number of teeth in the input and the number of teeth in the output, or um, force of the input gear or force on the end, force on the output gear. Now, the first thing that you can start by doing, remember this is the experiment that we did previously in the previous lesson, to say you can start rotating the smaller gear to drive the bigger gear and just keep counting how many times uh, the input gear rotate before the output gear can make one whole cycle. And as we did uh, last time, we realized that as per the speed ratio, our ratio was 5 is to 1, meaning that the input gear is going to rotate or make full cycles five times. It's only then that after the fifth one will the driven gear have made only one revolution. Therefore, the ratio would be 5 is to 1. Now, it's, it's, it's really tedious to try and calculate gear ratio or uh, determine gear ratio with this method. What if you don't have got these gears and you are in the examination um, where you get time to start demonstrating the gears? Now, we need to know the formula. Remember, you first have got to write the given information. In a given information, we said, uh, given the teeth, the number of teeth of uh, the driver gear which is 15 and the number of teeth of the driven gear which is 75. We are then uh, given as well the speed of the driver gear which is 10 revolutions per minute as well as the output force which was given which is given as 50 newtons. Now what is it that you are to calculate? We are firstly required to calculate the gear ratio, the speed of an, the input gear the input force. Now, what we're going to be starting with is the gear ratio. 
Let's check how we calculate the gear ratio. Remember, you can calculate the gear ratio as a teeth of the output gear over the teeth of the input gear or the speed of input gear over speed of output gear or the force of output gear over force of input gear. But now what's important here when you calculate your gear ratio is to check the quantity which is having both the input and the output. And in this regard, we've got the number of teeth given as a given in input as well as in the output. We therefore are going to use gear ratio is equals to teeth on the output or the number of teeth of the output over the number of teeth on the input. It's given number of teeth on the output gear is 75 and the number of teeth on the input gear is 15. So it's 75 over 15, it gives us 5. So that's our gear ratio. But then if you want to do the comparison ratio, we're going to say teeth of output gear is to the number of teeth of input gear, which is 75 is to 15. But then we have got to write in the simplest form. So we'll find the highest common factor of 75 and 15, which is 15. And we do divide both sides by 15. 75 divided by 15 will give us 5. And 15 divided by 15 will give us 1. Hence, our gear ratio remains 5 is to 1. Now, you can see that it does not matter whether you do it practically counting or you do the calculation, you will still remain with 5 is to 1. But what's important at this point in time is that 5 is to 1 in, ter is to one in terms of ratio is the same as 5 over 1, which is 5. So our gear ratio is 5. Now, we've already completed the gear ratio. Now we've got to calculate the speed of input gear. We are saying the gear ratio can also be calculated as speed of input gear over speed of output gear. We already have the gear ratio and we already have the speed of output gear. We only have got to calculate uh, to use the gear ratio and the speed of output gear in order to calculate input gear. How do we do that? Uh, we are saying gear ratio is equal to speed of input gear over speed of output gear, just the same as gear ratio over one is the same as speed of input gear over speed of output gear. Anything over one is just the, the same as that particular uh, component. Now, just the same. Now, what we're going to do is we multiply both sides by speed of uh, output gear so that we are remaining on the right with only the speed of input gear. So what do you do? It's an equation. What do you do on the left hand side? You also do on the right hand side. Let's uh, check. On the right hand side, you've got speed of input gear over speed of output gear multiplied by speed of output gear over 1, meaning that speed of output gear will, cal will cancel with speed of output gear because that's, that's it's, it's going to be the same as speed of input gear times speed of output gear over speed of output gear. So if speed of, if we say let's make speed of output gear A, so it's speed times A over A. A and A cancel. So on the left hand side, we're going to say gear ratio times speed of output gear will give us gear ratio by speed of output gear is equals to speed of input gear. Let's now substitute. Our gear ratio is how much? It's, uh, it's 5. We've calculated it as 5. And our speed of output gear uh, was given as 10 drafts per minute. So it's going to be 5 times 10 is, this, is equals to the speed of input gear, which will therefore mean that. Uh, the speed of input gear is 50 revolutions per minute. Now, I'm going to give you the formula. It's, it's, it's not necessary for you to every time uh, make something the subject of the formula or manipulate the formula. I'll give you all the formulas that you can use to straight away find answers. Right. The next question that was asked was for you to find this input force. Now, let's see how we find our input force. We must use the formula that includes forces. And in this regard, we're going to say gear ratio is the same as force of output gear over force of input gear. Like I said, gear ratio is the same as gear ratio over 1. So, in this regard, we're going to do what we call cross multiplication. If you want to do cross multiplication, remember, we want to remain with force of input gear. Now, as you do cross multiplication, it means that gear ratio is going to be multiplied with 
force of input gear and force of output gear is going to be multiplied with one so one times force of input gear will give us force of input gear and then gear ratio times force of input gear remains gear ratio times force of input gear let's check now force of output gear is how much it's 50 already calculated actually it's already given the force of output gear which is equals to our gear ratio is 5 multiplied by force of input gear you know it's it is multiplication 5 times force of input gear we only want force of input gear so we divide by 5 all around remember in an equation what you do on the right hand side you also do on the left hand side so we're going to divide both sides by 5 so 5 50 divided by 5 would give you 10 and 5 times force of input gear divided by 5 will give you force of input gear 5 cancelling with 5 therefore 10 newtons is equal to force of on input gear therefore our force of input gear is equals to 10 newtons that is how we do the calculations now I think you've seen that when we're doing calculations um, we kept on finding or making one uh, component the subject of the formula perhaps we should just know different formula so that you go straight and avoid this thing of cross multiplications and everything finally we are going to get or to get to understand the different formula for different components we don't have got to uh, find the subject of formula every time we, we, we get to make calculations now we are saying gear ratio is the same as teeth of output gear over teeth of input gear and is the same as force of output gear over force of input gear which is the same as speed of input gear over speed of output gear right if we have got to use only the number of teeth our gear ratio uh, our uh, calculations would be like teeth of output gear will be the same as gear ratio times teeth of input gear you can make teeth of output gear the subject of the formula by cross multiplication this is what you're going to get and as well we're going to say teeth of input gear is the same as teeth of output gear over gear ratio the number of teeth in the input gear is the same as the number of teeth of the output gear over gear ratio uh, the same uh, calculations can be used for force output equals to ratio times input and input equals to output over ratio just as we did with 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 with, with the number of teeth but as it comes to uh, speed as an inverse of what we've been doing with the number of teeth as well as the force with speed it's going to be speed of input gear is the same as gear ratio times speed of output gear and speed of output gear is the same as speed of input gear over gear ratio that is it That's, those are our, our formulas if, if if you can and if you can remember you can uh, just put them in mind but otherwise if you don't mind to go the route of every time making one the subject of the formula are still fine for as long as you arrive we arrive at the same answer Thank you very much. I think uh, with this kind of um, formulas, you'll be able to answer any question that is posed on gear ratios. From me, Asaf, that's a goodbye. Please don't forget to subscribe so that we can keep making more and more of these type of answers.